they don't teach kids that today. You know, when you give a handshake, you have to look in the eye and you gotta give it, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> RuPaul answers increasingly personal questions as the camera moves closer to his face. And I'm going to turn my phone off, although no one calls me. Well, no one has my number. Identity. What are you afraid of? Ignorant people. It's the only thing I'm afraid of. Ignorant people. Especially ignorant people who think they're smart. That's the scariest thing on earth. Where do you go to find peace? I usually go to Aretha Franklin Canyon. It's right here in Beverly Hills. And most people in LA don't even know it exists. I don't think Aretha Franklin knows, knew it exists. Uh, in fact, it's actually not called Aretha Franklin, but I call it Aretha Franklin Canyon. It's called Franklin Canyon. But because I called it Aretha Franklin Canyon, you'll never forget it. What's the biggest difference between your drag style when you first started out compared to now? Well, the biggest difference between my drag style back then from what it is today is about $150,000. How did you develop your present drag persona? My present drag persona was developed um, uh, out of my study of pop culture and how to create a caricature that someone could draw on a page and be recognizable. I took uh, two parts Cher, three parts Diana Ross, uh, a dash of Dolly Parton, and uh, a little bit of David Bowie and James Brown. Put them all together. Oh, and a smattering of Bugs Bunny. And that's how my persona, my public persona, came to be. What advice would you give to someone who feels alone? The advice I'd give to someone who feels alone is that, um, first of all, feelings are not facts. You know, what you feel is an indicator, but a lot of times it's not really the truth, because the truth is we are not separate from one another. We are actually one thing. We are one thing, but from your perception is, um, makes you think, and your ego, makes you think that, that we're, we're two different things, that you're over there and I'm over here. But the truth is, we are actually one thing together. When do you feel most like an outsider? I feel most like an outsider every day of my life. I've, I've come to peace with feeling like an outsider. I know it's a, a, a condition of of my brain. It's not necessarily the truth because actually everybody feels like an outsider. Everybody feels that way. And do I, you want me to take my clothes off for this one? <laughs> Family. How's your husband? Uh, I haven't had any complaints. How did you two meet? I met George on the dance floor at Limelight Discotheque in 1994. They actually stunted his growth when he was 12 years old. He was 6'8 at 12 years old. When I saw him out on the dance floor at Limelight Disco in New York City, um, he was wearing platform shoes about that tall and dancing like a maniac. So I had to go over to him and, and say, who are you, what are you, what are you doing? And I said, um, can I, hug you, can I put my arms around you? Because I've never, I'm tall. I've never been able to put my arms around someone's shoulders who was taller than, than me. So, um, yeah, and that was uh, 1994. Why did you two decide on an open marriage? Um, um, we didn't decide, that's what, <laughs> the, you know, this, the hoax is that monogamy is actually something that can actually happen. You know, I, I wouldn't want to put restraints on the person I love the most on this planet. Um, I wouldn't do that to someone I love, my very best friend. Listen, if you get something happening that you cannot resist and that it's gonna make you happy, go for it. Go for it, because the truth is, um, I know in my heart of hearts, like I've, don't, like I've never known anything before, that man loves me more than any 
thing else in this world. You once went on a noteworthy picnic with your sister. Is that right? My sister Renetta, who is my soul sister, uh, she's a twin, and my, both of them are soul sisters, but Renetta uh, put some cookies in a brown paper bag and took a blanket uh, out to the backyard, and she laid it out, we ate the cookies, and she said, this, Rue, is a picnic. And that was my introduction to magic and how to create magic in your life, a little magic. When in your life did you feel most abandoned? When in my life did I feel most abandoned? Well, you know, funny enough, this morning, George and I went on a walk here in Beverly Hills at uh, about 4.30 in the morning. And when I was 28, turning 28 years old, when Saturn returns in your life, I, um, I was out here living with my younger sister sleeping on her couch with not a nickel to my name. And I would walk around in the middle of the night in Los Angeles uh, uh, with uh, no car. And uh, it was the most hideous existence you could ever imagine. And that went on for a couple of months uh, before I came to my senses and moved back to New York. What is the most significant way your mother has influenced you as an artist? My mother told me something very important. She influenced the way I conduct my life to this day, which is, unless they are paying your bills, pay them bitches, no mine. So uh, she gave me the chutzpah and the moxie to do my life my way. Action Dolly? It was Dolly here? I'm sorry, I, you know, you, I, you gotta entertain yourself. Otherwise, what's the fucking point? I've turned into my father with the one-liners, but I get it now. I really get it now. Culture. What are you obsessed with right now? I'm obsessed with striped French sailor shirts. I, you know, honestly, I must have 50 of them, 75, 80, yeah. I, I just bought a few uh, when we were in, the, uh, in France uh, again. I mean, you can buy them anywhere, but um, I love them. They're perfect. No, I, actually, I want to change my mind. This moment, I'm obsessed with the Bee Gees. I love the Bee Gees, the Brothers Gibb. Uh, I was just listening to them uh, uh, on my hike yesterday morning and in the bathtub this morning. And I could, I could actually start crying thinking about how beautiful their songs are and how just otherworldly, the harmonies and the, I just, I love them so much. Aside from you, who's the most fabulous person on the planet? Wow, you know, the first person that comes to mind is Dolly Parton. What's one thing people would be surprised to know about you? Uh, I think they'd be surprised to know that I'm actually more of an introvert than I let on. I'm actually um, not really a people person. Um, I can do it. I, I've studied humans. I know how to uh, engage with humans. But it's not my favorite thing to do. I like being alone a lot. What never fails to make you emotional? Toy Story 3 really gets me. I saw Toy Story 4 on the plane coming back from Europe uh, the, uh, the other day, and I loved it and I cried throughout it, but it reminded me that Toy Story 3 had me bawling from beginning to end. Uh, similar to um, the, the Wizard of Oz, which is also the story of human life on this planet. Did you ever spend time in a restaurant named Florent? I went to Florent restaurant in New York uh, starting in 1985. It opened in 85, and I started going there then, and I went there till the end. In fact, the other day, this is a true story, uh, I lit a candle with some matches from Florent, and it's been closed for, I don't know, uh, 
It's been ten years, maybe? How long has Florot been closed? Since 2008. Oh, wow, yeah. What about Stingy Lulu's? Stingy Lulu's was a restaurant I would go to in the East Village all the time. And just about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, um, Zach Galavakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalakalak
So I joined in and I started making television in 1982 with them. You've said we're all born naked and the rest is drag. What does that mean? I've famously said you're born naked and the rest is drag. What that means is that we are all more than just what it says we are on our driver's license or what it says we are in our job description. We are actually, in reality, an extension of the power that created the whole universe. Can you handle it? I'm going to take this microphone off. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you.